of things that we don't lock our users in. Sometimes if the door isn't locked, it can be a little stuck. And so you really need to work quite a bit at it to, to get it open. So focusing on the user, we thought the best experience we could give was to make it easy, as easy as possible for users to come and go um, out of that door. Now, on the, on the subversive side, I don't think that this is the typical thing that you would expect from a big company. Uh, it certainly isn't anything I would expect, and I didn't know how well it would go over when I started. Uh, but th this touches back to the cloud. How is the cloud different from storing your data in your computer? Why is this so important? Why is it that most consumers feel that data on my laptop here is safer than it is in a cloud service like Google or any other company for that matter? I think it's a similar feeling as to why you feel safer driving your car down the street than flying in an airplane, despite all statistics to the contrary saying that flying in an airplane is much safer. So we have a, this is our mission, is that any data you put in or create in our products, you're free to take with you. So this is actually a, a commitment and a promise. And again, if you lock people in, they, they'll, they'll stay for certain, certainly will stay for longer. But eventually they're going to break right through the wall and possibly leave everything behind them. Now, this, is, this ties a lot into the open uh, versus closed debate. And closed systems tend to be vulnerable to this, to this, to, to open, to, I'm sorry, vulnerable to disruption. Not because they're fun, fundamentally because they're closed, but if you're operating with a closed system, you're much more likely to rest on your laurels. You, you don't feel that sense of urgency that you have to continue to innovate. You have to continue to make your products better to, to retain your users. So, as a company, you have choices on where you're going to focus your resources. Are you going to focus on innovation and keeping users because your product is so good that they want to stay? Or are you going to focus on locking them in so that they can't leave? Now, lock it, locking users in has worked well in a lot of different ways, typically for products that uh, that have a very high barrier to entry, that require an upfront purchase of hardware, uh, an upfront install of something very large, etc. But with the internet, with the open web, the cost of switching is extremely low, and internet users are faster and faster to adopt to new technologies. So again, I think that they should be able to export their data in an easy way so that they can switch to a, a second source or a competing service. So why would we start such a crazy team like this? A lot of it comes from the fact that even before I started working at Google, I heard Eric Schmidt speak, and I, I, I'm very, very calm when I hear Eric speak. He's a very relaxing speaker for me, but he would end his talks for so long saying that we don't lock our users in. This is really important. Um, and when I came, when I started at Google, the one th theme I kept hearing over and over again was focus on the user. Focus on the user, they'll worry about uh, other issues later. If we get, if we make our users happy, get uh, them to use our products and, and continue to innovate, that that is a successful way of, of re retaining them as users. But beyond that, quite frankly, this is a little bit selfish. I use a lot of Google products myself, and if there's something else comes along that is better suited to me for, for my needs, I want to be able to take my data and go to it. So again, going back to the mid-90s, uh, software was an island. There was no network. Well, there was, but it was, it was very inaccessible to the common uh, uh, consumer. The internet uh, is, is now here as an open system. It's very different than that. Uh, engineers and developers would write software that ran only on their computer, on the computer. It only had to talk to a local data store. It didn't have to worry about format. But a very interesting thing to point out is that the ability for lock-in still existed back then, but in a different form. That lock-in existed through proprietary formats. Now I have a whole bunch of Word files from 1995 that I can no longer read. Okay, so that's lock-in still existed. It's just it takes a different form nowadays. Today we have an open web, open internet, open source, open data. It's all open, open, open. But the way we implement this, uh, we have to be careful, or we're going to wind up with something like this. The on the net, on the internet, with an open system like this. Closed systems are vulnerable. If you dial back to systems we had in the United States back in the 80s and 90s, Prodigy, CompuServe, America Online, these were all closed systems that no longer exist. Or in the case of America Online, they changed into something very different as a, an open content provider, an access provider on the open web. We think that open systems,